In this manhua, the protagonist Tang is reincarnated as a baby in a world where the higher races enslave humans. Watch how he becomes stronger as he devours bloodlines. Here, fairies have absolute dominance over the human race as humans are not only tools, but also livestock and food for them. However, no difficulty could stop Tang from finding his wife, whom he thought was also reincarnated along with him. His determination would not waver even if the heaven wavers. In the vast fairy continent, there was a town inhabited by wolves, which was surrounded by endless forests and mountains. Amidst the dense forest, Tang practiced his throwing skills and cultivated energy to become stronger. He jumped with joy as his mysterious heaven skill leveled up to the third level. But the sad thing is, he had no ability apart from the unique skills recorded in this technique. He reminisced about his past life, where he could destroy mountains and dry the sea with his spirit skills. He figured that the humans in this world were new species, and thus still had a long way to become the dominant species. Due to that, the casualty rate of humans was very high. During his three years in this world, he saw one-third of his fellow children die for various reasons. However, no matter the difficulty, he needs to survive and find Xiao Wu. For that, the only way is to become stronger. Speaking of becoming stronger, one needs to eat healthy foods. But while he was munching on some wild apples, he heard the sound of fighting, so he peeked in the direction through the bushes and found out that a masked human was fighting a wolfkin. It was pretty astonishing for the human to be able to fight with a third-rank wolf. However, to his surprise, the human stopped and unleashed an energy wave greater than the wolfkin, and Tang saw the human transforming into a beast-like shape. He was astonished at how a human could have such power and as expected the wolf was killed in a short while. But after the wolf died, another wolf came in, swearing to take revenge for killing its brother and attack the human with its sharp claws. And just then, Tang San ambushed the wolfkin with his jade hand skill while the wolf almost caught his hand. But he succeeded in the attack, but barely as he huffed and puffed. That attack wasn't any normal attack. It was an attack that hit the vitals, but he cursed as his baby body was so weak. Then he went to the injured human, and asked about the, the ability that he used. The human was surprised because he thought that Tang already knew much about the divine monster transformation as he was able to defeat the wolf. Tang was surprised and wanted to know how that skill worked. So the human replied, saying humans, monsters, and fairy races all had part of each other's bloodlines, and one needs to stimulate the bloodline through mysterious techniques. And only this way could humans have some power. But most of the people who could stimulate the bloodline betray the human race and become vassals for the monsters and the fairies, giving them a higher standing than ordinary humans. However, some humans like him fight for their own rights and break free from the shackles. The human also added that he was on a mission to assassinate the Lord of the Wind Wolf, and thus, when he failed, was chased down. Tang was unsure if he could unlock the abilities in normal ways since he was reincarnated so he asked if there were any other ways to gain the transformation ability. The human replied, saying one can also deprive one's own power of transformation and give it away to another. But if the other party is not able to adapt with the power, then it will cause him to die. He then asked if the monsters and fairies could be deprived of their power. He said coughing out blood that it was unlikely since the bloodline density of monsters was very high. The human introduced himself as Zhu Jiaxin, and said that since Tang was just a child, he got a lot of potentials to grow stronger, and since he would die either way, he could pass his own transformation power to him. However, he added that Tang must promise to help the humans in need and join their organization called Redemption. But before Tang could say anything, the human extracted some kind of golden energy from his body and said not to collect his body after he died, as that could expose him to the wolves. After that, he handed that energy ball to Tang, which made Tang go into a trance as he felt that this energy could easily be integrated by his mysterious heaven skill. And he also felt that the energy was nourishing his body along with improving his mysterious heaven skill. He was ecstatic as the mysterious heaven skill made it seem so easy. Then he wondered if the mysterious heaven skill was so good at adapting the different energy in his body. Then, what if he tried it on a monster? Curious, he tried it and discovered that it worked. So he deprived the two dead wolves of their energy and headed back to the shelter after cleaning up his traces of the fight. In the room, when other kids were sleeping soundly on a dried grass bed, he meditated like no tomorrow. 
He was ecstatic that his physical abilities improved after absorbing just two wolves. But he didn't forget his goal was not just being a little strong, but being strong enough to find Xiao Wu in this vast fairy continent. And also, the promise of joining the Redemption Organization gave him a headache as he didn't know where it was. A week later, Tang was working in the field to harvest rice and felt that the two bloodlines he had absorbed had been finally assimilated in his body after tirelessly working. So he sneaked into the forest to try out the bloodline skills. One was Leopard Flash from the human, which let him run very fast, and another was Wind Blade skill from the wolves, which let him throw blades made out of the wind to his opponent. And both of these skills could be used by him at will, without any conflict. This again proved the importance of the mysterious heaven skill from his past life. He thought he really could conquer the world with this mysterious heaven skill. However, when two years passed, he was distressed as his heaven skill didn't break through to the next level. He thought that the world's rule must be suppressing the skill. So he had no choice but to absorb more bloodlines by killing monsters despite the risk. Next day, he targeted a wolf to be his victim but a post notice caught his eyes. So he activated his purple demon eyes that let him see clearly the content of the poster from a distance. It was about a mixed blood screening that tested the enslaved people for the talent of becoming vassals for the monsters. And this revelation gave him a new plan, so he abandoned his target. Three days later, the wolves gathered everyone in the village and released a mysterious blue energy that stimulated the bloodline of the kids in the surroundings. Many screamed in pain as they transformed. One kid after another began to react. Tang was also among them, but he suppressed his urges to transform, but nonetheless reacted. So he was also selected to be trained to be a vassal. Only a dozen enslaved people who passed were in residence, and three died for being unable to withstand the bloodline's power. Within the residence, a girl with white hair asked him if he was sure that he could awaken the bloodline skill, and warned if he couldn't, then he would be killed. Tang San was warmed, seeing the girl's worry. So he introduced himself as Tang San. On the other hand, she also introduced herself as Ling Mushui. Two days later, the final screening day came as a human vassal in good clothing greeted the wolf priest behind him. Then he asked the slaves not to resist the energy. At that moment, Tang San felt that his Windblade ability had improved by a bit. One by one, five people were selected, and five were rejected. Then as Tang San was told, the five rejected were dragged to the altar for human sacrifice. The priest added that those who have the wolves' bloodline but couldn't utilize them are a shame to the clan and should be killed immediately. Thus, together with the ten women previously dragged into the altar and the five rejected youths, the sacrifice was concluded as a red line of energy pierced through the sky. Tang San saw the white skeleton of humans buried under the altar. He then swore that he would one day make human beings powerful enough to have their own rights. After they were taken to where they would be living, the guy introduced himself as Wang Yanfeng and said he would teach them how to become qualified vassals. He also introduced a woman named Chiu Jing as his wife, who later took them to their dorm to rest. The first thing Tang San did after getting into the dorm was to bathe, but he saw Ling Mukshui crying as she said that her mom was also dragged to the altar. Hearing that, Tang San clenched his fist as memories of the past began to surface. But the two teachers intervened and got into the room, saying the world is cruel and they had no choice. Yang Feng also said that all the surviving vassals, including them, experience this kind of pain every so often. He then said that Tang San and Ling Mukshui are both wiser than the other kids, and also mentioned how Tang San's wind blade skill was awakened long before, but as he hid it, which means he is trying to escape. But he warned that if anyone betrayed, then all the surviving members of the same batch would be executed. However, he said he would keep it a secret, for they are like his family. He then told them that the only way to get revenge was by growing stronger, and they would be taught how to grow stronger for three years. So Tang San thanked Yan Feng for advice after he finished talking. The next day Wang Yang Feng named three unnamed children. The tallest one Wang Chao, the shortest one Wang Zhong, and lastly, the mid-height one Wang Xiao Lei. Then he told them that they would study wolf culture in the morning and practice wind wolf transformation skills in the afternoon for three years. In addition to teaching characters and cultural classes, they will also be taught about the geography of the fairy continent. Tang San learnt that there are seven main cities for the monster race and the fairy race, including the Holy Spirit City in the center of the mainland. 
Tang San was extra attentive as this knowledge might help him find Xiao Wu. However, Yang Feng added that the Wolf Clan might look strong in their eyes, but they are fragile when compared to the other clans. Tang San then asked if the whole continent had humans. In reply, Yang Feng said that humans are the largest race in the Fairyland, but they only have the quantity, not the quality of the bloodline. Later in the afternoon, they were taught about the basics of a Wind Wolf transformation, and through Yan Feng's guidance, everyone learned it quickly. But what surprised Yan most was the fact that Tang San learned it faster than anyone he had seen before, as though he had already used the technique many times. But Tang Sang ignored Yan's surprise and asked what the strongest level of cultivation of the monsters and the fairies is. In reply, Yan Feng said that according to the legend, it's 12th rank. Then Tang San analyzed that if the rank's power was still the same as in his old world, then one could directly cultivate to the first god rank. He then knew why there was no god in that world, because the energy of this planet itself is at the level of gods. So when too many people call themselves god, the value of the word god decreases. Again, in the middle of the night, he sneaked out of the residence to the nearby forest. But today, his goal was to experiment on the wolves. Thus, after one of the third-ranked wolves separated, he ambushed it and knocked it unconscious with crane-catching dragon, which is a part of Mysterious Heaven's skill. Then he absorbed the bloodline when it was alive and was successful in not killing it in the process. But he left it alive to see if it could recover its lost bloodline. Well, it really worked and enhanced his Windblade skill while improving the rank of Mysterious Heaven's skill a bit. He knew that these two experiments were necessary, so he risked them to power up for he needed to be strong fast. Tang San was disappointed, as even after absorbing the third-ranked wolf's blood, he couldn't break through to the fourth rank of Mysterious Heaven skill. He speculated that he needed to devour a fourth-ranked wolf to level up. After a few days, he observed the wolf he had attacked previously, and found out that it had recovered its bloodline power after rest. Since the third-ranked wolf won't work then, he needs the fourth rank. But sneak attacking a fourth-ranked wolf was a big risk for him. The next day, the teacher was training everyone on fighting moves by letting them attack him. After testing Wang Zong, he was praised for him being able to preserve his strength. Next was Ling Mushui. She attacked very directly and almost touched Wang Yan Fang. But Wang Yang Fang caught her, so she couldn't attack. And when it came to Tang San, the teacher was surprised, for his eyes were glowing blue. Then Tang Sang attacked Wang Fang. However, the wind blade disappeared halfway, which caught Wang Fang off guard but he was able to block it nonetheless. Everyone was surprised that every attack Tang San made would carry an invisible wind blade. But how could they know that this little guy in front of them was a master of hidden weapons in his previous life? So the teacher asked him about the hidden wind blade ability and where he learned it from. He refused to believe that he learned it by himself. So Tang made up a lie and told his teacher that when he was six years old, he went to the woods and met a man by chance. The man not only gave him food, but also taught him the technique every night. He then told him that the demon god transformation isn't the only way to grow stronger, and there are other ways to grow stronger as well. And he said that humans could only use the technique, and the end goal of using this technique was to redeem mankind. Of course, Tang San revealed the redemption thing as he trusted his teacher, and just as he expected, his teacher told him not to say anything about this thing to anyone. Then Tang San asked if his teacher wanted to learn the technique from him. Of course, his plan was to absorb the bloodline power from his teacher while fighting. All his teacher needs to do is sleep, then the absorbed bloodline power will be recovered. And so Tang San began to demonstrate the technique as they fought with each other. However, amidst the fight, Tang San absorbed the teacher's bloodline from the left side of the body, which paralyzed the teacher on his left side. And after that, he admitted his defeat, for he needed to absorb this power quickly. While he was meditating on the rooftop, his mysterious heavenly skill finally broke through the fourth rank. But he couldn't just simply keep absorbing bloodlines as he needed to grow strong enough for his body to accumulate new bloodlines. The next day, his teacher called him out after class and reminded him again that the Windwolf town has 33 vassals. And among these people, if anyone betrayed, then all of them would be killed. So he must never mention the word redemption again. Tang San agreed and asked his teacher if he wanted to learn his hidden windblade technique again. Wan Yang Feng lied and said that his windblades improved after last night's training, 
for he didn't want to be reprimanded by a student for being too dumb. Tang San added that the hidden wind blade technique is not that difficult to learn, but one needs to learn basic handshake techniques first. Thus began another round of training and sucking up bloodlines, and the following days, during the lunch break, Wang Yang Fend would learn from Tang San alone. But the other students thought that the teacher was teaching Tang San personally and giving him a special treat, not knowing it was the opposite. Thus, another 100 days passed. And during that time, Tang San would either practice wind element array at night or go out to sneak attack lonely wolves. With that routine, Tang San quickly increased his strength, and in the blink of an eye, a year passed. And by this time, students were used to Tang San being treated differently by the teacher. But today, Wang Yang Fang gave him a map that he had always wanted. As he opened up the map of the vast continent, he imagined that Xiao Wu had to be somewhere on that map. Seeing him excited, Wang Yang Fang asked him if he wanted to go to the city along with him. Tang San was even more excited and quickly agreed. The next day when they went out for the city, Yang Feng warned Tang San that the city was dangerous, so he should always stick with him. Along the way, they met a high-ranking monster and bowed their heads to it, as Yang Feng warned them not to look at it, or he might be killed. And soon after that, they reached the gate of the city. And again the teacher warned him not to look around much, and to be humble. After entering the city, they got into a rundown hotel that was only used by the vassals. There Tang San got to know Gui Gui, who was like a little sister to Wang Yang Fang. So after settling in, they went straight to the ancestral home of the Wind Wolf clan, and Wang Feng told Tang that only he could go inside, so he should wait at the gate without wandering around. Tang San complied and waited beneath a tree, but when he looked around, he saw a milk tea shop named Mei Milk Tea Shop with a vassal owner. And when the wolf customer was gone, he went to try but froze as he saw someone he knew so very dearly. Xiao Wu. He looked more and more, and he was afraid it was all but a hallucination. But it wasn't. As Xiao Wu gave him a drink and said to not stay in this neighborhood for long as the nobles won't be very friendly. He didn't listen to what she said and just called her, but she said it was not her name, and everyone calls her young master Mei. Tang Sang, despite facing the ruthlessness of time for thousands of years, couldn't help but cry as though he was really just a child. Again Xiao, as though she didn't know him, asked why he was crying and told him to drink it hurriedly. So he drank the milk as though he was drinking her milk. And in the meantime, his teacher was also done with his work and got out of the ancestral home and told him that they needed to leave the core area as it was not a good idea for a vassal to stay there for long. Tang nodded and went to pay for the drink but was rejected by the shop's owner who looked like the mother of Xiao Wu. But he paid the money nonetheless. And before leaving, he told them his name, hoping Xiao Wu would remember it. Back in the inn, the teacher asked if Tang San was okay and said that a cup of milk was enough to touch his heart. Then, he said that he could go out with his aunt Gui. She also said that they could just go to the annual collision tournament. When Tang San asked what that was, she said it was a traditional competition where two young warriors fight. Tang San was even more excited after hearing it was about fight, so he agreed immediately. In the arena, a bear-like monster was shouting out the rules of the arena, saying the person who is close to the center of the arena after colliding with the opponent is the winner, and the person with ten wins in a row wins the match, which will give him many spirit horn coins. Tang San also asked his teacher if he could participate as he thought it was a good chance to steal bloodlines when colliding with the opponent. But they said that it was very dangerous even if he won. It was not good to expose his identity. But he changed his outfit with a hoodie and masked his face and said not to worry. After that, he registered for the competition with a number badge of six. After a few games, his number was called out against a flash leopard. When he went to the stage and showed everyone his badge number, everyone was astonished. For he was not only a vassal, but also so tiny. Cheers to kill the vassal erupted from the crowd, for it was a disgrace for a vassal to think they could fight against a monster. The leopard used its flash skill to reach him in seconds, but Tang San got under his belly with his tiny body, used wind blades, and simultaneously extracted bloodline from the leopard. After that, he crawled out from underneath the cheetah and proudly declared his victory on the stage. But at his victory, some of the wind wolves were taking pride while some of the leopard monsters were furious, and one even went to attack him on stage, but was shooed away by the bear-like referee. Then another guy with a horn on his head from the rhino race appeared on the stage, 
The rhino was confident in its defense against the wind blades, so he charged without any hesitation. And as the rhino expected, the wind blades didn't phase him. But that wind blade was just a feint. The real attack was dealt by Tang San's two hands. One hand extracted the bloodline from the rhino and another dealt the heavy blow through its eyes. The now blind rhino rushed into the crowd frantically but was stopped again by the referee. Then the next opponent came. It was a falcon, and Tang San figured out that it was sent specially to deal with him. And as expected, the falcon was clearly at an advantage, as it was flying where Tang San was just on the ground. The falcon locked its bloodline ability on its target, Tang San, but was counterattacked by the purple demon eye of Tang San, along with the wind blades, which immediately dealt an invisible blow to the falcon as it fell on the ground. Tang San hurriedly pretended to deal more blows and touched the body of the falcon to extract the bloodline. Seeing this, even the bear-like referee was surprised by the vassal winning against the falcon. And so the next monster that was put against Tang San was a rhinoceros deer demon. This time everyone was confident that the vassal would lose, as the rhino deer has a very powerful spirit strength. And Tan San knew that the monster race would give him even more powerful opponents since anyone could join as long as they were above the third rank and below sixth rank. So, he should just be done with this game. And thus, he didn't attack, but used his extraction skill to extract the bloodline and quickly fled after taking the money for the three wins. Even the deer didn't expect that the opponent would run away without any shame. The referee thought that Tang San had exhausted all his energy in the previous fight, and thus had no choice but to run away. In the meantime, the leopard race was furious and chased after him, for he had just killed one of their own. But Tang San covered his body with the bloodline of the leopards, so the leopards couldn't even trace him back. He returned to the inn and saw his teacher and ant guy waiting for him, and rebuked him, saying he shouldn't have killed the leopard. So the ant told them that they needed to leave the city sooner than expected, for it might be dangerous for him to stay here any longer, and left them to inquire about the leopard's movements. Then Wang Yang Fang asked why he was impulsive today. Tang San said that it was because he wanted to earn money to buy milk tea from May's shop. Wang then told him that he could buy it for him, and not to do this kind of stuff again. So Tang San apologized and went to his room. He didn't go to sleep today as he needed to observe the new bloodlines that he had absorbed. He gained three new types of bloodlines, and under his observation, he found out that with his mysterious heaven skill, he could remove and separate bloodlines too. Which made him ecstatic, as he wouldn't have to worry about absorbing the wrong bloodlines in the future. Now that he had analyzed the bloodlines, it was time to fuse with them. So he first started with the rhino's bloodline, which had the ability to use the skin as heavy armor. And as he expected, it strengthened his body after being fused. Next was the falcon blood, which also enhanced his physical strength. And the last was the spirit rhino deer blood. But he wasn't able to fuse with it and thought that it must be because he could only fuse four different bloodlines in the fourth level. But when he was about to give up, he sensed that the eagle bloodline was pulling over the spiritual rhino's bloodline, and the eagle blood was devouring the spiritual deer's blood and causing a mutation that made the eagle eye even stronger. He was satisfied with today's events, as not only did he figure out the upper limit of absorbing different bloodlines, but he also found out the fact that the fused bloodlines can mutate when different types of bloodlines are absorbed. The next morning when he was cultivating his purple demon eye, which needed morning sun, he was surprised to see that his speed of cultivating the demon eye increased by a lot. He analyzed that this should be the effect of the mutated eagle bloodline. So he tried to actively use the eagle bloodline and saw the world in a new color. With the mutated eyes, he could also see the different elements in the air. And he could also invoke them, which is nothing short of heaven-defying. So he immediately put improving the skill as his first priority when it came to training. Just as he was about to experiment more on this skill, Wang Feng informed him to prepare as they were leaving. When Tang was outside the city, he again thought about Xiao Wu, who didn't remember him at all. But again, on the way back, Tang San was reprimanded for drawing attention to himself and told to be as low-key as possible. Back in the dorm, he saw everyone training hard when he got back, so Tang San also joined them but overpowered them easily. When Wang Yang Fang came, they complained about it. But Tang San said that they were too weak and needed to speed up their growth. If not, they might not even become proper vassals. Even though Wang Yang Fang was dissatisfied, he still agreed to say that Tang San would join the actual combat class from then on, which made the students even more afraid 
as they might get beaten up daily from then on. When Tang San and Wang Yang Fang were alone, he asked Wang Yang Fang if he could help him find more info about the Wind Wolves. When Wang Yang asked why he needed it, he truthfully said that all the vassals wanted freedom in their hearts, but they didn't dare to escape due to the lack of power. But Tang promised that he would free all the vassals of Wind Wolves if he had enough information about the enemy and enough strength. So, from then on, Tang Sang would teach the students his Tang Sex secret skills every day, except the mysterious Heaven skill. But even teaching them basic techniques from his past life was enough to mesmerize them. That day, Tang was running fast through the nightfall towards Kerry City, for he wanted to test how long it takes to get to the city. But when he reached the city, he felt wind elements in the ambient being moved as he felt three people with strong wind power inside the inn. When he peeked through the window, he saw a fifth-rank martial artist wearing a mask along with Wang Fang, who seemed to be wary of the masked man. Later, he finds out that the masked man is from Redemption, and he also reveals a shocking truth about Aunt Gui as he says that she was a member of Redemption too, and also requests Wang Fang to join Redemption. Wang Fang was assured by the man that the other vassals would not be implicated. Then he was asked if Tang San, his student, had enough talent as the information says. At that time, Tang revealed himself, which shocked everyone on the scene, including the man, but he asked Tang to hold on to his attack for a few minutes, and then he would pass the test to join the Redemption. So Tang San also added a condition for joining the Redemption, and asked that the place where the Redemption trains him should be in Kerry City, and the fake identity should be very secure. The masked man sneered, and said to wait until he passed the test. This pissed Tang San a little, but he complied, and attacked with his windblade. The redemption guy was surprised that the speed of the windblades was controlled by Tang San, which he never thought was possible. Generally, after one throws the windblade, it will only be affected by the terminal velocity and air resistance, and slow down its speed over time. Also, he never saw a windblade that could change direction in the middle of the flight. So, he thought that since Tang Sang was good at ranged attacks, his close combat should be weak, and so he moved closer, but was hit by wind blades that came from behind, and it blasted itself on his back. Tang San asked if the test was over. In reply, the man asked where he had learned such a good technique from. When Tang San was about to say some made-up lie, Wang Fang interrupted and asked Tang if he really wanted to join the redemption. To his question, Tang San firmly said yes. So the teacher said that though his position would make it hard to join the redemption, he hopes that he sees humankind free in his lifetime. Tang San promised Wang that he would try his best. So the redemption guy who broke his mask in the battle told them that he would arrange the said conditions and left afterward. On the way back to redemption, the guy coughed out blood for the attack of Tang San, really crushed his balls. He then swore that such a good seed should definitely join redemption. The next half month, Tang thought about Xiao Wu while cultivating until the masked man came back saying his requests had been approved and the plan was to blame the conflict between the two monster races for the disappearance of Tang San. If the wolf race is sure that the slaves are dead in the conflict, then they would no longer suspect of betraying. He explained that the Leopard Clan and the Wolf Clan were always in feuds in the Kerry City, and the feuds grew even stronger after a leopard was killed by a wolf vassal in the collision tournament this year, and they can arrange for some vassals of the leopards to attack this side of wolf territory and take Tang San away in the chaos, and assured that this operation would personally be presided over by one of the elders of the Redemption. And he warned Tang San not to leave until 300 breaths from the start of the fight, which would take place three days later. Wang Fang also said that with his talent, humanity will have greater chances of being free, and said that he will always be welcome at Wolf City. Three days later, 10 kilometers from the Wind Wolf Town was a group of leopards marching through the forest. The leopard-like monster called out to a human called Zheng Mengqi and asked if this route was the only way to get to the wolf town. The human addressed the wolf as Master Xin and confirmed that this was the safest route. And when they reached very near the wolf town, they waited for the darkness of the night to embrace them. And when the night came, the leopard attacked the wolf clan and fought with another strong member of the wolf town. In the fight, it was revealed that Xin attacked the town because he sensed the breath of the leopard clan members in the wolf town and thought that they were kidnapped by the wolves. The strong wolf was surprised, and asked his fellow kin if they had really kidnapped any leopards recently. But the wolf denied it, 
but under the suppression of the leopard, he revealed that he couldn't break through to the next level, so he kidnapped some leopard children to eat. Hearing that, the leopard was even more furious as he heard the wolf eating the leopards to get stronger. At that time, the leopard revealed its full rank, which was at the seventh rank. And just at that moment, the 300 breaths of time were nearing. So Tang San bid farewell to his teacher, and before he left, Wang Yang told him to inform his aunt Gui about his successful escape. But Tang San was Tang San. To him this fight was like a treasure trove since he could gain a lot of bloodline strength from the injured and dead monsters. So he walked along the edge of the battlefield, looking for some small-scale conflicts to take advantage of. When he found a suitable chance, he immediately made use of it with his extraction skills, as he killed them along the way. After that, he encountered a fight that was fought by very strong individuals. There were two wolves fighting against a leopard. But that leopard had a higher cultivation base, so the wolves weren't capable of defeating it. So the wolves used their last straw of chance as they threatened the leopard by self-detonating the wolf core, which would cause massive explosions nearby and would cause the death of both parties. So the leopard had no choice but to stop the fight. But the leopard said that they needed to hand over the culprit of the kidnapping along with the kidnapped leopards. The head of the wolves complied and told the underlying Feng Xiong to go and not implicate the entire wolf town. So Feng Xiong, the culprit, planned to run away quickly as he didn't want to get caught by the leopards. Seeing the situation, Tang San quickly left, for it would be hard to leave once the conflict reached a whole conclusion. Feng Xiong was surprised when wind blades attacked him, which made him confused as to why a fellow clansman would attack him. But he was bound to be even more surprised as the 18 wind blades were executed by none other than a human vassal. But his surprise turned into disbelief as he saw Tang San rush towards him with leopard flash. Tang San evaded the wolf claws using his purple demon eye, which showed the ambient movement in slow motion. Then he used his rhino strength and physically blocked the attack of the wolf, all the while executing the wind blades and his finishing touch, he used his skill from his previous life, called Hundred Balls Breaking Fist, to break down the wolf. Tang San huffed in exhaustion, for he had just fought a guy that was way stronger. He didn't intend to fight the wolf, but who could blame the wolf for running in the same direction as him? He quickly absorbed the blood of the strong wolf, which immediately made him break through to the fifth level, and the wolf brand of the bloodline he previously had also changed color. It seems the wolf this time was really different. He then spotted a pouch belonging to the wolf, took it away, and escaped. Not longer after he left, the strong wolf priestess was howling in grief as she found out that the wolf was dead. At that time, the leopard also arrived, for he intended to chase the wolf that was running away, but it didn't expect the wolf to be dead even before he arrived. The wolf blamed the leopard for the wolf's death and said that Feng Xiong had the bloodline of the Wind Wolf King. The leopard was surprised for a small place like this to have the bloodline of the King Wolf. But before it could escape, it saw the priestess sacrificing itself for greater power to take revenge against the leopard. Even Tang San, who was leaving with the masked human, saw the red beam of sacrifice from a distance. In the meantime, the head of the wolves in the Kerry City sensed the energy from the sacrifice and was furious. Thus, Many wolves were dispatched from the ancestral home of the wolves in Kerry City near the shop of Xiao Wu. Along the way toward the city, Tang San found out that the masked man was called Tian Xiao. Just as they were near the city gates, they took a detour instead of entering the city, and Tang found out that they were heading towards the Redemption Academy of Kerry City. They soon arrived at the castle that was surrounded by high walls, so Tang asked if this was the academy but was denied by Tian Xiao as he said that this was the highest level of academy in Kerry City, where only nobles with high talents join. Then he reprimanded Tang for saying the name of the Redemption Organization so loudly, and said that Kerry City is not in control of the academy, but the academy is in control of the Kerry City, and nobles from different races want the best offspring, so they try really hard to get their descendants into the academy. And far away from the Shining Academy was the Academy of those who sought redemption. The Redemption Academy looked more like a rundown hotel than an academy. Inside the broken crap of the academy, Tian Xiao took his leave after he brought the little child, Tang San, to a mighty man with brown hair. But the mighty man exuded a strong aura of bloodlust, which forced Tang San to use his rhino bloodline and leopard flash to get away. 
the mighty man praised him for breaking through the fifth rank and asked why he could use different bloodlines at the same time. Tang San was surprised that he was exposed so easily. The man questioned if Wang Yang Feng knew about this. Tang San denied and said that he was the first one to know this. He again made up a BS and said when he was a child, he met an injured man that gave him a book called Mysterious Heaven Treasure Record, and he learned many techniques from that book. Later in years, he found out that he also had the ability to absorb bloodlines after he touched the monsters. The man asked if the method of controlling wind blades mid-flight also came from that book. Tang San nodded and asked him if he wanted to learn some of his techniques too. Then he saw the man in red sealing the surrounding area for soundproofing, then warned Tang San not to tell anyone about what he had just said to him. And it might seem like a good idea for every human to know about heaven skills, but it will do more harm than good, and none, even from redemption, should know about this technique. But Tang asked, isn't it a good thing for every human to be able to get stronger fast? But was rebuked by the man as he said that when the fairy race finds out about this fact, then they will cause mass extinction of humans before the human could even get stronger. And only if Tang San could cultivate the skill at the highest level and become the strongest to protect the humans, could the human race be able to fight against the monsters and the fairies. Then he introduced himself as Zhang Hao Xuan and said that he was a rank 9 transformer with the blood of the Flame Tiger King, and said that his bloodline is strongest among the tiger race, second only to the gold bloodline of the Tiger King lineage. Then he said that Tang should start from the red division of the Redemption Organization in order to conceal his strength. Seeing the puzzled look of the Tang San, Zhang Hao Xuan explained that there are seven major levels corresponding to the colors of the rainbow. Red, orange, yellow, green, cayenne, blue, and purple, where red is the weakest and purple is the strongest. Tang was attentive and asked the level of his new teacher and was surprised that Zhang Hao was just at the green level. He was also told that he was chief in charge of Kerry City, and the little town surrounding the Redemption Academy was called Academy Town. About 1% of the people in the town belong to the organization where the most important task is to cultivate reserve talents for the freedom of humanity. Having said all the craps, he then imprinted Tang San's identity token as a redeemer on the back of his right hand. That imprint could only be seen by using a special method, and this imprint can also reveal the bloodline strength of the person. Then Zheng Hao took Tang San to meet everyone and introduced him as his new disciple, which made everyone surprised. Then Tang San was given under the care of the director of the academy, Guan Long Zhang, as Zheng Hao took his leave. Later, Guan Long introduced Tang San to Mu Yun Yu, who was in charge of daily life and physical training, and her elder brother Mu An Qing, who was in charge of real life combat. Then Si Ru, who was responsible for teaching all kinds of theories about divine monster transformation. So Tang San greeted them and introduced himself as a person of rank 4 with Windblade manipulation. Everyone was shocked at his rank at such a young age, but little did they know he was at rank 5, not rank 4. Then the director called out a student named Du Bai and told him to escort Tang San to room 3 in the east. In the way to the dorm, Du Bai said that it was nice for him to have his own separate room. When in the room, he said that he would later take him to the academy town to buy some necessities. Tang thanked him but Dubai said to not be so polite as they will be a competitor in the future. Then he told him to look at his eyes as he tried to hypnotize Tang San with his bloodline skill. But Tang San counterattacked it with his own eyes, which made Dubai scream in pain as he rolled in the ground covering his eyes. When everyone came in to know about what happened, Tang told them that Dubai told him to look at his eyes, so he complied. But in the next second, he began screaming like a bitch. Miss Mu Yun then took Dubai away, and Director Guan Long told Tang San that Dubai had the eyes of a heavenly fox, which was the ability to spy on everything in heaven and the earth. And Dubai was the only currently known human to have the bloodline of the heavenly fox. Then a girl named Cheng Zichen came in and said that she was there to take him to the market to buy some necessities. Tang San thanked her, but she said that she was just there to return the favor for teaching Dubai a lesson and found out that Dubai always spied on the girl's dorm with his ability. The girls couldn't even take a dump peacefully for him. On the way, she said that the academy town was mainly responsible for providing all kinds of things for Carrie Academy's daily needs, to assist Carrie Academy's monster race students in cultivation, and they also have a sparring ground where their students practice actual combat. 
and the academy town is mainly divided into three parts. Sparring group, medicine group, and service group. After buying all the necessities, Tang San was back, but he was greeted by Dubai as he said that Tang San's spiritual power was very powerful. But the pain he suffered this time wasn't as bad as when he spied on Miss Mu Yunyu shitting. He then added he screamed more because he wanted Miss Yunyu to take care of him. Hearing that Tang San understood that he underestimated the backboner of this feminine man. He then told him that they needed to go to his welcoming dinner held by the chief. In the dinner table, Chief Zhang Hao said that he officially accepted Tang San as a disciple, and amidst everyone's shock, he placed a good chunk of juicy meat on Tang San's plate. And every man became hungry, and every woman became wet seeing the meat Tang San had. But before Tang San could taste his meat, all that was left was a boner, as the hungry wolves and the wet waifus ate the meat. Although they ate his meat, Tang San was still satisfied, for he got to suck on the boner and reminisced that this had to be the best meat he had beaten. After the dinner party, when everyone was gone, Chief Zhang told Tang Sang that it took them more than 300 years to bring the status of the Redemption Academy to this level. Redemption finally was able to be recognized by the monster race as they slowly started to develop on them. And if humans could have such a place on the entire continent, then there would be no more suffering. After some more emotional crap, he left before telling Tang San that the Redemption Academy has another rule. A disciple could only have a single master. After that, Tang San went into his room and opened the treasure pouch. When he tried to open it, he was surprised as he saw that it wasn't a normal pouch, but a storage bag. And it had a restriction which was, it could only be used by Feng Xiang's bloodline. And since Tang San absorbed the bloodline of Feng Xiang, then he should be able to see what was inside. And so he tried opening it, and saw that it had ten cubic feet of space. And there were hundreds of elemental wind coins along with many wind spirit stones that were very pure, and not to mention this pouch still had three spirit horn coins. Tang San really made a big fortune robbing that guy. But he didn't get drowned in happiness. Instead, he further fused with Feng Xiang's bloodline. He then understood the quality of the bloodline, which was much purer and denser than any other wolves he had previously absorbed. Then he thought of his classmates still living in the wolf territory, and hoped that the incident didn't implicate them. The next day he again met Dubai and found out that the physical fitness class would be held in the morning, and the actual combat class would be in the afternoon. And Chen Zi appeared out of nowhere and told Tang San that Ms. Mu would let the students fight against Tang San to showcase his ability. Then Dubai addressed Cheng Zi as Chicken Zi, and said that she mustn't hurt little Tang. But Chen Zi was angered being called a chicken, and was about to rebuke him, but Dubai said if she hit a heavenly fox, then she would be cursed with bad luck. Then it was revealed that those that hurt the heavenly fox bloodline encountered bad luck in the future. But Tang San shook his head, saying he had never encountered bad luck after hurting Dubai's eyes. Instead, he was blessed with many treasures from the storage bag of Feng Xiang. Later in the physical training class, Miss Mu equipped everyone with four counterweight bars, each weighing 10 kg. In addition, everyone's monster transformation power was sealed as they were forced to race through the mountains. After reaching two mountains, Dubai was sweating wet, so Tang San asked if he needed any help. But the wet Dubai denied it, and asked how Tang was not wet after crossing two mountain peaks. After the fourth mountain, Tang San again asked Dubai, but Dubai rejected him again. Thus Miss Mu appeared and pulled out two weights from Dubai and gave them to Tang San and told him to go on his own. Tang San complied while Dubai was being punished by whipping as he moaned. Soon after, with extra two weights of 20 kg, Tang San reached the top of the mountain and saw Chen Zi had also reached the top. So Mu Ankin, the brother of Miss Mu, unblocked their bloodline powers. Then they rushed back to the academy from the mountain. Chen Zi asked to hurry. Otherwise, they won't have anything to eat. Tang San then saw Chen Zi flying with chicken wings and wondered if he could eat some chicken wings when he went back. But he didn't hold back and rushed too. In the way, Tang San thought about it and decided to choose his senior sister Chen Zi as his fifth bloodline. But despite trying his hardest, he still couldn't outrun the flying chicken Zi. When he went back, he saw director Guan Long waiting for him as he said that he wouldn't receive the punishment since it was his first time. After Tang went for lunch, the director asked about Tang San to see Ri, 
who was good at analyzing opponents with his knowledge. But when Siri said that Tang was at the fifth level, the director was surprised and understood why the chief would take Tang San as a disciple so quickly. On the way to the canteen, Tang asked Chicken Z if the academy allowed students to enter the town. But she said that they would only be allowed if two people go together. She wondered how come he had the stamina after a dang running wet. On the way, Tang San asked what the name of her bloodline was. She then said that it was the bloodline of the Golden Wing Great Peng's bloodline. However, she added that her bloodline was still incomplete and needed to perform an ancestral transformation to increase the potency of the bloodline. Hearing it, Tang craved for the chicken blood even more, so he asked if she wanted to spar in the afternoon class. She agreed and said that she would not show any mercy. In the afternoon, Tang fought with the chick, but the chicken was forced back by wind blades of Tang. The onlookers were shocked to see 18 blades being controlled simultaneously. Tang San's wind blade blocked the lift path of Chen Zi, which made it impossible for a bird race monster to advance any further. And Tang San took advantage of her panic and rode on her wings with his ghost step technique. After touching her wings, he smoothly absorbed her bloodline, which exhausted her. Tang San then comforted her for her defeat along with teacher Mu Ang King. Director Guan Long then asked Tang San if he had reached rank 5. Tang San replied that he had just recently made a breakthrough. Everyone was shocked to the core, along with Chen Zi, as Tang San was too young for a rank 5. But Tang Sang ignored everyone's surprise as he was very used to this both back in the past and in this life. He was analyzing the blood of Golden Peng from Chen Zi, but was again hugged by Dubai. But he didn't let this chance go and absorbed the bloodline of Dubai too. But even that little time of absorbing was enough to get a first level Heavenly Fox bloodline. So he thanked Dubai, which made Dubai puzzled as to why Tang would suddenly thank him. In the next game, Gu Li and Zhang Zebin faced off. Zhang Zebin took the initiative to attack with his fire-type bloodline, whereas Gu Li used a skill that froze the surroundings and was likely using a time-freezing skill. Tang Sang was conflicted as he pondered on which bloodline he should be fused with. Even though the ability to control time is powerful, he needed a flight skill too. Tang San then asked Dubai about the bloodlines of these fighters. Dubai then explained that Zhang Zebin was a variant of the Scarlet Dragon, and Gu Li was of the time crocodile bloodline. Hearing it, Tang San was gloating as he couldn't wait to get his mysterious heaven skill to the next level to fuse with these bloodlines. Then the next person came, and the director told Tang San that he was called Wu Binji, and was the only student whose cultivation base had reached the sixth level. He also encouraged Tang San to do his best against him, and find out his own limit. At that time, Dubai warned Tang Sang that senior brother Wu Bingji was very strong with his Ice Essence bloodline, which is a legendary bloodline belonging to the fairy race. They both attacked simultaneously, Tang San with his wind blades and Wu Bing with his ice shards. But Tang San kept dodging all the ice shards. Then Wu Bin created a snow mist in his vicinity and kept throwing ice shards from there. At the same time, he made an ice wall to protect himself from Tang San's wind blades. But Tang San was also empowering his wind blades with more energy, and compressed all of them into one very sharp and strong blade. His previous attacks shattered three ice spears of Wu Bing, making everyone shocked. But the next attack of Tang San was even more ferocious. Thus, Wu Bin created ice shields after ice shields to defend head on. But the teachers were surprised because it was harder to compress so many wind blades into one than making a nine sided ice shield, which proved the superior elemental control of Tang San. An elemental control was the specialty of the fairy bloodline, but Tang San was of monster bloodline, which made even little sense. However, to the shock of the students, the nine-sided shield was broken one by one, and at last, only one ice shield remained. Tang San was a bit disappointed not being able to destroy all the shields, but he didn't want to expose all his trump cards. Thus, he admitted defeat to the onlooker's shock. After all, that was all he could do with only one bloodline ability as the opponent was an entire level above him. After the battle, teacher Siri asked Wu Bing if he had discovered his shortcomings. Wu Bin nodded and said that in terms of control of elements, Tang San was better than him. Siri then told him that he might ask for some guidance from Tang San so to improve his elemental control. Thus, Wu Bing asked Tang San if he could give him some pointers in the future. Tang San happily agreed and said he also wanted to learn from Wu Bing. Later, Tang San was called in by teacher Si Ri and the director, 
who asked him how he was so good at elemental control while probing him with their divine consciousness. Tang Sang was a bit surprised, feeling the divine consciousness as it was not something any Tom, Dick, and Harry could have. Then, Siri informed Tang San not to worry as checking his body is essential to determine his future training methods. He then asked Tang San how he controls his wind element. In reply, Tang San said that he could see them and play with them, and in exchange, they listened to him. Siri then asked, how do the wind elements look like? Tang San then replied, saying they look like azure light spots, and they like freedom, and if restrained, they become irritable. Siri was surprised by Tang San's understanding of elements even more, so he asked if Tang San wanted to be his disciple. Then, the director, Guan Long, also chimed in and offered Tang San, saying he was better than Siri. But Tang San said that he already chose a master who said that one could only choose a teacher in this academy, and quietly left, which made the teachers shout at the mayor as they said that they would find the mayor for misguiding Tang San. And that said, Mayor Jang was now greeting a woman, supposedly his superior, who asked him about Tang San. Mayor then replied, saying Tang San had broken through to the fifth level of bloodline at only nine years old, which earned him praise from the women. But she also added that the academy might not be peaceful anymore, since a high-ranking monster race person noticed something about this academy, which meant that they might need to change the location. But the mayor said that he didn't want to change until it was the last resort, and asked how long he left before he must change it. She said that she would let him know, and said that there shouldn't be much danger now. Mayor thanked her, and said she must also take care of herself since she was one of the backbones of the organization. But just at that moment, Teacher Si Ri rushed into the room, cursing Mayor Jang, but noticing the Holy Mother, he apologized and greeted her. He then complained that Zhang Tian had taken in Tang San as a disciple, even though he didn't know anything about elemental control. Zhang then replied he did so quickly since he knew Si Ri would rob Tang San from him. The Holy Mother was also curiously asking what could make the teachers so tempted to take in Tang San. Thus, Si Ri said that Tang San's fifth level wind elemental bloodline power could compete against Wu Binji's ice element, which was of the fairy race and at sixth level. Even Zhang, who knew a lot about Tang San, was surprised. Holy Mother then said, It was not the point, but the point is Tang San was just nine years old and had a lot of potentials to become even stronger. Again, Teacher Si Ri kept complaining and asked Zhang Tian to hand over Tang San. Dr. Zhang was even more shocked, for he knew Tang San had other abilities apart from just Wind Wolf transformation and didn't know how crazy Si Ri would become if he knew that. Then the Holy Mother took her leave and said that he must prepare for any change, and before leaving, she shouted the motto of the organization, Gather like a fire, scattered like stars. Then Zhang Tian said that the academy might not be able to continue here and be closed at any time. He again mentioned the person who was suspecting them, and said if not for the Holy Mother, they would not be able to stay here hidden all this time. Si Ri then said that since Holy Mother personally came, that means shits are serious. And when Si Ri again sought Tang San, Mayor told him to just let Tang San choose, which made Si Ri even angrier. Thus he left. In the room, Zhang Tian swore that he would not let anyone find out about Tang San, even the Lord. As the fewer people knew about Tang San's abilities, the better. At the same time, Tang San went to the mission hall and met Wu Bin Ji, who then told him that the missions are divided into three types, sparring, hunting, and collecting spiritual herbs. After checking out if there was any suitable missions, Tang San left after Wu Bin Ji told him if Tang San was free that night then, he would like to take guidance from Tang San about elemental control. After getting out of the mission hall, Dubai said that Wu Bing Ji attracts a lot of girls in the academy, especially Chen Zi. But as soon as he said that, Chen Zi appeared and smacked Dubai with her wings. Then Tang San said that the senior brother wanted to talk about elemental control that night, and if she wanted, she could join too. But she said that she was not an elemental. Tang San then said it was all right. They could also talk about her own bloodline. Thus she agreed and flew away. Then Dubai praised him for talking bullshit in all seriousness and said that she would definitely hit bad luck since he attacked him. Back to Chen Zi's room, her toes hit the doorframe as she grieved in pain. When Tang San went to the library, Madame Yu praised Tang San for winning against Wu Bing Ji, and said that she would increase the weight for Tang San from the next day onwards. 
Then Dubai charmingly asked if he could take a day off since his backboner was aching, to which she told him to get lost. The Dubai again told her that he was a lucky charm, and she shouldn't be harsh to him. When the night came, everyone gathered, and Wu Binji asked Tang San if his elemental control was purely done by spiritual strength or by any type of technique. Tang San then said that it mostly relied on technique, but also needed good enough spiritual strength. Wu Binji was curious and asked if Tang San could teach him the technique. Tang San replied, saying there was no rush, as he must first figure out the right technique, especially for Wu Bingji. Thus, Wu Binji thanked him, and after that, Tang San shared his understanding of the elements and also made some suggestions of both Chun Si and Wu Bingji. Tang San was then asked how he compressed his wind element when the wind element was the most challenging element to compress. Tang San then said it depended on arranging the elements in a followed pattern, which would let them become much denser. Tang San again showed them practically how he compressed his wind element, and Wu Binji found out that the elements being compressed had to be of the same frequency to sync. Thus, he thanked Tang San again. After the meeting was finished, Tang San integrated the new brand of Peng bloodline, which made him jump to the peak of level 5 as his existing bloodlines were also strengthened by the new bloodline. Then he tried out his ability of Golden Peng Bloodline as two light golden wings sprouted from his back. Then he tried to do something that even the original owner of the Golden Peng Bloodline, Chen Zi, wouldn't be able to do as it needed Wind Element's assistance to fly faster. And this fusion of Wind Element and Golden Peng's Bloodline made his speed reach a new height guaranteeing his survival even more. The next day at breakfast, everyone was paying attention to Tang San as he had been seen as stronger than Wu Bin Ji. Dubai then asked if Tang San could show everyone his technique that broke eight shields of Wu Bing Ji. Then Wu Bing Ji came and said he was enlightened last night by Tang San's words, and after a night of the experiment, he found his own way to control his ice element. Then the guy with the time element bloodline also came and asked if Tang could also give him some pointers, and Tang agreed, and said he also wanted to learn something about time control. The next day, director Guan Long said he would describe some things again about the hierarchy of the monster race considering Tang San wasn't there at the previous classes. He then said that monster races divide bloodlines into five major levels, and the human vessels don't belong to these five levels. The fifth level refers to those who are not good at fighting, and the fourth level is the most common, and has the largest numbers. And the Wind Wolf Clan was at the fourth level, but they couldn't break through to the ninth level. And the third level could be said to be the mainstream of the monster race, and it was possible for them to break through to the tenth level and cultivate the so-called God level. But they can't reach the top of the 12th level. Tang San then discovered that level 12 was equivalent to the first ranked God in his previous life. Director also said that the level 3 and level 4 monster races constitute the main force of the entire monster race. But the second level of the monster race is on a whole different level. The monsters on the second level are called great demons who had the potential to cultivate to the 12th level of the great ancestral demon. They inherited the Great Golden Bloodline, standing at the top of the pyramid, controlling the entire monster race. And if humans want to be free, then at least someone has to reach this level, and could have the slight possibility of breaking free from the enslavement shackles of the human race. Then he said that the first level of monster blood was called Heavenly Demon, who inherited the Great Golden Bloodline fully, and their inheritance is related to the life and death of the entire monster race and they could cultivate to the 13th level. He added that there are a total of seven heavenly demons in the monster race, and the city lords of the seven main cities of the monster race were all heavenly monster descendants. After that, Tang San got a clear idea about the level of this world, and found out that the level of this world was higher than his previous world. That meant even if he got his previous life's cultivation level back, he would not be able to rescue the humans. At that time, Dubai began to brag about how he was the only inheritor of a level 1 bloodline in the entire class. But Chen Zi rebuked saying that Dubai's blood density was so weak that he couldn't even break through to the fourth level. She also added that she was far better than Dubai, as her bloodline density was considered good and was of the second level of the monster bloodline. Tang San then understood why his improvement was so big after absorbing her blood yesterday, and realized that Wind Wolf, Flash Leopard, and Rhino bloodlines were all of level 4. But he wasn't frustrated as he could replace the low-level bloodline with high-level ones anytime. 
Tang San then got up and asked which lineage of the seven heavenly demons the Kerry City belonged to. Director Guan then replied, saying it belonged to the peacock great demon emperor, who is the king of birds and the leader of all the flying monsters. He then said that the previous generation of the great peacock demon died in silence, and although he had a direct bloodline inheritance, he didn't reach the monster sovereign level. This is why the monster race protects the descendant of the heavenly demon at all costs. Tang San guessed that the peacock must look like a phoenix from his previous world. After the class ended, Tang San asked for leave to go to the city as he needed to talk with Gi Gui and wanted to know more about the situation in Windwolf Town. Director Guan agreed but told him to bring Wu Bing Ji with him and also said that the Windwolf Clan and the Leopard Clan had just had a battle yesterday, which was initiated by the Windwolf's ancestral house from the Kerry City. But Tang San just wanted to see Xiao Wu again, and in the meantime, he will visit Aunt Gui too. So after a while, Tang San and Wu Bing Ji set off. On the road, Wu Bing Ji said that he was able to compress his ice element, but it was very difficult and praised Tang San, who could compress wind which was much harder to compress than ice. Tang San then said that he shouldn't focus on stability all the time, as sometimes it's better to have controlled instability. There, Tang San demonstrated an unstable wind ball instead of a blade, as he threw the ball toward a rock which broke the rock hill apart. He added that the same principle applied to the ice element. After arriving at the Kerry City, Tang San led Wu Benji to the milk tea shop, where he saw Xiao Wu. Tang San then told Wu Bin to stay there as he would buy him some delicious milk tea. Then Tang San got in the line for the milk tea among the monster race. But a porcupine monster threw him off the line as it took his place. But Xiao Wu reprimanded the monster, thus, it stepped back. Tang San asked for two cups as Xiao told him to leave quickly. But Tang San asked her why she was selling milk tea. She replied that she wanted to take care of her family. He then saw Xiao Wu deliberately slowing down the speed of making the tea for the monster, as she was afraid the monster would go after Tang San. Thus, Tang San accepted her help, and quickly left after drinking the tea, and went to the hotel of his aunt Gui. On the way, Wu Bin Ji asked if Tang San knew about Xiao Wu. Thus Tang San said they have met once when he came to the ancestral house of the Wind Wolves. Wu Binji then asked if he really came out just to meet her again, and reminded him that to be able to open a store in the center of the city, and no demons causing trouble, must mean she got a strong background and perhaps was a vassal of a powerful race. He also told him to not get blinded by the appearance of a girl, and think about his future. But Tang San was frustrated since Xiao Wu didn't remember him at all, but she still cared for him proving her personality was more or less similar to her previous life. But he understood from Wu Binji's words that only by becoming stronger can he be qualified to be beside her. Thus he didn't waste any more time and told Wu Binji that he wanted to take sparring missions. Back to the Mayor Jang, Tang San was summoned and was asked why he wanted to spar instead of laying low. Tang San replied that he needed to absorb bloodlines of stronger monsters and Carry Academy would be the best choice. Mayor Jang said that it would be risky to expose his ability but Tang San said that he was sure people wouldn't be able to notice his absorption ability. So to test it, Tang San was told to absorb the mayor's bloodline. So he made a sneak attack on the mayor and touched him, and after that, told the mayor that he swallowed a part of his bloodline, and added that it was enough for him to form a level 3 bloodline. He also said that if he could touch his opponent through physical attacks, then after the battle was over, the improvement in his bloodline wouldn't be small. And if the opponent's power is not much stronger than Tang San, then it would be difficult for them to even notice that something was amiss. But Mayor said he still couldn't let him participate in the sparring since his abilities were too good to be shown in public, and said that their town had recently been watched by a monster race, so they must keep a low profile. Then Mayor Jang gave him a pouch of 100 demon coins, and told Tang San to pick up other tasks apart from sparring, and said that the mission he chose should have two more people to accompany him. In the combat class, Wu Bingji again wanted to spar with Tang San to test his newfound compression control. Tang San threw wind blades and Wu Bingji threw ice blades toward each other. Tang San used his shadow ghost step to get closer to Wu Bingji. But Wu Bingji said that he was best at melee combat. But Tang San again threw his compressed winds from close proximity. But this time, the wind blades were sped up by a small tornado in the ass of the blades. And when the wind blades exploded, it created a tornado that swept the ice walls and shards created by Wu Bingji. Thus in the end, Wu Bingji lost completely this time, 
Thus Tan San was given the promised five demon coins and was told that Wu Binji would visit him again that night. Everyone was surprised that these two just got even stronger in just two days while they were just playing with mud. At this time, Gu Li, the guy with time control ability, also stepped up and wanted to spar with Tang San. He wanted to know if Tang San's powerful elemental control could be used when the time was paused. He believed that his time ability could be the only ability that could restrain Tang San. Even Wu Bingji, who was stronger than Gu Li, suffered a lot when sparring with him. And wind element is harder to control than ice element. Once it's paused, it will be hard to regain the control. Thus, another battle started with Tang San's wind blades and Gu Li's time freeze. Tang San could feel that the freezing was taking effect as it was becoming harder to control the wind. But Tang San had prepared two more wind blades beforehand as he threw at him. But Gu Li again activated his time freeze ability, which made Tang San truly freeze as Gu Li headbutted Tang San in his stomach. But that was his mistake as Tang San's absorption ability took effect, which also made Gu Li fly out. Gu Li, even the director, was confused about the attack backfiring. What really happened was when Gu Li touched Tang San, he activated the mysterious heaven skill and used the method of crane catching dragon technique to touch the opponent and directly absorb his power. And the crane catching technique, after the absorption was finished, threw Gu Li out. Thus, Tang San was finally able to gain the ability of time from Gu Li. He felt that once he improved this bloodline, he would be able to touch the higher laws of this world as a bloodline of different levels resonates with this world differently. He also felt that the time bloodline should be at the same level as Dubai's bloodline, which was at the first level of bloodline. After the sparring was finished, Tang San took out the monster hunting mission and told Wu Bingji to gather two strong students that would be helpful in the demon hunting mission. But Wu Binji was doubtful if the teacher would let them have this dangerous mission. But Tang San took the responsibility to take care of the permission. Thus, he left to look for the teacher Muan Qing and fed him some BS, saying that they needed to experience actual battle with actual opponents to get stronger. Thus, they needed to go to a monster hunt and asked him if the teachers could protect them from behind when they go to monster hunt. Teacher Muan Qin said his plan was good and he would discuss it with the directors and tell him the result tomorrow. That night he examined his bloodlines. Flash Leopard and Spiritual Eye Bloodline were at level 4. The Wind Wolf Blood was at level 5. The Golden Pang was at level 2. And the Rhino Blood was at level 3. And he needed to replace one of these bloodlines. Thus he chose the Rhino Bloodline and fused with the Time Bloodline, which was already at level 3. During the fusion, Golden Sparks appeared in Tang San's Spiritual Sea and he was enlightened about the concept of time. This time there was no increase in his cultivation or body strength, but it felt completely different, as though the suppression from this world that held him down from birth had disappeared as though this world had completely recognized his existence. Tang San was very happy as, without the suppression, he could cultivate the essence of this world and cultivate even faster. The next morning, Muan King came with a piece of good news, as the other teachers agreed with Tang San's idea and said that they could form teams to form hunting teams, but Tang San should keep it a secret from the students that the teachers would be protecting them from the dark. Tang San then suggested a team consisting of him Wu Bingji, Gu Li, Chen Zi, and Dubai. Wu Bingji asked if five of them would be enough to beat a seventh-ranked winged tiger. Tang San nodded and said that Dubai would be taking part in the hunt as luck was very important too. When Dubai was informed, he was very happy. He then invited Chen Zi by saying Wu Bingji was also joining. Then he went to Gu Li and said that he would teach him how to defeat Chen Zibin after they come back from the hunt. Thus, the five-person squad was ready for battle. Later, when Muan King heard that Tang San was trying to hunt a seventh-ranked winged tiger, he called him crazy. But Tang San said that he had confidence in the teacher's abilities and that the students must feel the threat of death to hone their will. But Mayor Jin agreed with Tang San and said that they must experience some life and death battle to grow stronger and said that he would be protecting them personally. The next day they sneaked out of the academy, leaving Director Guan angry as he said that the organization might disband this place if anything happened to Gu Li and Dubai. On the way, Tang San assigned everyone's role. Dubai was tired after walking a bit as he said that the heavenly demon fox race always traveled with guards in case they needed to rest in their journey. After a while, they entered an area active with demonic beasts. At that time, 
A pincher suddenly broke out from the ground as it attacked Gu Li, but the ice shield from Wu Bing Ji blocked it. Then the group saw a ground-splitting lizard of level 5. Thus Tang San lifted it off the ground with a tornado. Gu Li used his time freeze, and Wu Bing Ji used his ice freeze while Tang San gave out the finishing blow. It took them 10 seconds to kill the lizard from the moment it showed up. Everyone praised Tang San, but Tang San said it was Dubai that alerted him. When Cheng Zi asked, he said that Dubai discovered the enemy through his heavenly fox demon bloodline, which made him feel uncomfortable. After that, Wu Bingji collected the blood of the demonic beasts and stored them in his storage bracelet while others were keeping guard. After taking a bit of rest, they again moved out as Mayor Zheng followed them. When the night came, everyone took turns to guard as they were resting atop a tree branch. During that night, Wu Bingji and Tang San were again discussing elemental control. Tang San also demonstrated another improvement for Wu Bing's ice ability, which left a hole in the hill. Tang San introduced this technique as hand arrow. Thus, to the surprise of Gu Li, Wu Bing Ji practiced the entire night to master the new skill taught by Tang San. The next day they hunted six more demonic beasts and gathered to rest, when the night came. During that night, it was Gu Li who sought for advice from Tang San. Tang San then instructed Gu Li to improve his spiritual strength to make his ability stronger, and told him to exhaust his spirit strength until he was empty then, his spirit would naturally keep recovering, and if he kept doing it, his spirit would keep getting stronger after every exhaustion and recovery period. He also told Dubai to carry out the same training method to improve his spiritual strength. Then Tang San said he would also teach Gu Li to defeat Zheng Zebin. Thus he took a rock and bound it with a rope, and asked everyone to step back. Then he smashed rock hills and trees with each rotation, and every rotation brings along more power than the last. Of course, Tang San was using his hammer technique from his previous life, which was the best technique to smash irons and form weapons. Then even Chen Zi was enlightened, thinking if she could do the same with her wings. So was Gu Li as he was enlightened to use his crocodile tail instead of the rock and the rope. This technique would definitely increase Gu Li's attack power significantly, and he told Tang San not to call him a senior brother as he was stronger than him. After Tang San demonstrated the technique a few more times, they practiced the whole night as loud sounds reverberated throughout the vicinity. Tang San warned Chen Zi that her wings' characters are light and sharp, not heavy and blunt. Thus he told her to make sure her body could handle it. After the midnight, everyone was tired from training. Only Dubai and Tang San was awake and talking under a tree. Dubai was complaining that even though he had great bloodline, but he was stuck in the third level for years and complained, saying he felt useless in a team full of strong people. He then asked if his method of improving spirit strength was really valid. Tang San said it would be difficult since his heavenly fox bloodline is too high level, which made the requirements even higher. He then said that level 3, level 6, and level 9, in short, after every three stages, is a major bottleneck that is hard to clear, and said that his method would help as long as he can cross the bottlenecks. Hearing it, Dubai almost cried. Seeing that, Tang San said that he had another way, and asked if he wanted to try it. Dubai was ecstatic and asked what the method was. Tang San told him that he would tell him in the morning. When Tang San was alone, he was attempting to fuse the eye of the heavenly fox with spirit eye. So when the heavenly fox eye came into contact with the spirit eye, it exploded the later, and the heavenly fox took its place. Then the eye of the heavenly fox moved on its own and took the first place among all the bloodlines which made them chaotic. The heavenly demon eye was very domineering and didn't like to be with the other blood, and pushed them all out of their own comfort zone, leaving them unstable. Thus Tang had only one choice to save his bloodlines, and that was to restabilize all bloodlines. Thus, one by one, Tang San moved them into different positions according to their strength. When he felt like he was out of danger, he saw the fragments of the spiritual eyes circling around the heavenly demon eyes as though admiring its beauty even in death. But at that moment, Heavenly fox demon blood entered his spiritual sea and absorbed his spirit strength like crazy. And after a while, it evolved to the third level by itself. At that time, he felt that he became even less restricted by the rules of this world. And as he expected, this demon fox bloodline tried to occupy his body to take control of his consciousness. But how could it take control of a god king's consciousness? Even though his body was not of a god king, but his consciousness was as firm as his previous life. Within his consciousness, 
He squeezed the bloodline hard and compressed it into a liquid state. At that time, the fragmented parts of the spiritual eye also took this chance to fuse with it. Tang San had no idea how big of a commotion he was causing as the surrounding area covering a kilometer in diameter was filled with the sudden inrush of Essence Qi, which alerted Mayor Jang. As the Essence Qi poured into Tang San's body, he felt his body was being cleansed of impurities. The sudden absorption of massive spiritual qi improved all his bloodlines by one level, except the Wind Wolf bloodline, which was already at level 5 and had now reached the peak of level 5. In addition, the spiritual sea has changed from a gaseous state to a liquid state after being compressed and had now reached the next level. The change brought by fusing with the Heavenly Fox bloodline was unimaginable, but if Tang San hadn't had a bit of divine consciousness left from the past, then he would have lost all his other bloodlines and would have become like Dubai, who was stuck at third level. When Mayor Jang rushed in the scene, he noticed that nobody had broken through despite seeing a big energy storm. The next morning Tang San taught Dubai the method of cultivating purple demon eye from the morning sun. After the sun fully rose, the group again set out. But this time, Wu Bingji warned them, saying they were about to enter a danger zone that had a winged tiger inside. Everyone was confident with their newfound tricks taught by Tang San and needed a realistic blow, and Tang San knew that the seventh-ranked winged tiger would be the best blow for them. At that time they smelled a fishy smell in the air. Thus, they became alert and saw a tiger with wings, but it was not an adult tiger and was not at seventh ranked. It attacked Gu Li first, but was hit by Gu Li's tail, and when Wu Bingji threw ice blades, it blocked them with its spiritual shield. Even the wind blades from Tang San were unable to penetrate. Then the shield exploded into countless blades towards the group. It was difficult for Tang San to beat the tiger since it had an elemental wind body. Thus he asked Wu Bing to keep it occupied while he prepared a heavy attack. When Wu Binji was fighting the tiger, it created a wind tornado and hurled it towards him, but he barely blocked it with an ice blast. Cheng Zi also smacked the tiger's head with her wings which hurt the tiger's head, and then a hidden wind blade penetrated through the tiger's eyes completely as it died. Everyone was surprised as they couldn't even see Tang San's wind blade attack. It was possible by compressing the wind blades into the shape of a needle as it penetrated the tiger, and Tang San knew it was impossible to compress the wind into a needle shape without strong spiritual strength, and after last night's fusion he was able to gain quite a strong spiritual power. And at the last moment, he used his heavenly eye to disperse the wind element around the tiger so that it couldn't maintain its shield, and after the shield was disabled, he used his needle to pierce its eyes. Everyone was happy seeing they were able to defeat a winged tiger of sixth rank. At that moment, Dubai started feeling uncomfortable again and was even sweating, thus Tang San knew that a great danger was approaching. So when Wu Bingji sensed it, he knew that a high-ranking winged tiger was approaching and only the mayor could fight with it. And then it appeared, 8 meters in length and with a wingspan of 12 meters. It was a level 9 winged tiger. Everyone was told to flee, but they couldn't as the surrounding wind element had been blocked by it. Thus the mayor appeared, and under his protection, the group fled the area. But Tang San wasn't relieved yet, since he knew that if the winged tiger came to take revenge, then there was a high chance that another winged tiger was in the vicinity. And sure enough, the other parent of the winged tiger that was at level 7 came as it roared. Everyone was exhausted from the fight and the run, so they wouldn't be able to fight. Thus, Wu Binji told Tang San to take the group away, and that he would fight the tiger. But Tang San said that the only way was to fight it head on. Thus so everyone agreed, and prepared to fight against the tiger. They took the initiative, and Tang San rode the ice spear made by Wu Binji. Tang San and Gu Li both used their time ability, which made the tiger freeze twice. At the same time, Tang San used his mysterious jade hand to touch and devour the bloodline strength of the winged tiger. Due to Tang San quickly devouring the bloodline of the tiger, his body was filled with pain. Thus, after the absorption was finished, he coughed out blood and fell from the back of the tiger. Gu Li and Wu Bingji tried to save him, as Wu Bin used his ice ability to freeze, while Gu Li also used his time ability. But Gu Li wasn't able to save himself as the tiger opened its jaw ready to swallow him whole. Seeing this Tang San, screamed and tried his best wind techniques while coughing more blood, which cut the tiger from different directions. 
Tang San was not in good shape after devouring a huge amount of energy from the tiger, but his mysterious heaven skill broke through to the sixth level. In the distance, the ninth-ranked winged tiger fled, feeling its partner dying. Mayor Zheng came and asked about the casualties. He found out that Wu Bingji broke a few ribs while Gu Li was in a coma due to a mental overdraft, and Tang San then saw that even Mayor Zhen was coughing out blood. Mayor then told Tang San to protect Gu Li and Wu Bing as he was going to find Chen Zi in Dubai. When recovering, Tang San saw the bloodline that he got from the winged tiger, but as he was about to experiment more, he saw the mayor come back with Chen Zi in Dubai, who was in a coma. The mayor then congratulated them as they successfully defeated the tiger all by themselves. After a night of resting, Tang San recovered a little and told him Mayor Zhang Haoshuan about the last night's incident. Then the mayor congratulated Tang San for his good luck, as the mouth of the tiger was its only weakness, apart from the eyes. In reply, Tang said that it must be the luck from the senior brother Dubai's heavenly demon fox's bloodline that they were lucky. The mayor Zhen asked if Tang San had broken through to the sixth level. Tang San replied affirmatively and said he was not the only one, but also Wu Bingji and Gu Li must have broken through as they surpassed their limit in the last battle. The mayor was happy and said that he would bear all the responsibility of last night's accident if that was the case. When they went back, all the students slipped past the inspection of the teachers, and only Mayor Zhang was left to describe their journey to the teachers. S.I. Ri asked why he was injured despite being level 9. Everyone was surprised as they heard about the incident from the last night. Even they wouldn't expect many things to happen when Mayor Zhang was accompanying them. Thus, Si Ri and the teachers rebuked Mayor Zhang. But Mayor said they could go next time instead of him, which made them angrier. After they went back, they decided to share half the loot with the academy, and half would be divided among the five of them. Wu Bing also added that the meat of the seventh-ranked tiger was very nourishing, and everyone could use it. When Tang San was alone in his room, he began fusing the winged tiger blood with wind wolf bloodline. But he saw that both of the bloodlines were of the same strength and could devour each other. He knew it must be because his wind wolf blood was special after absorbing the wind wolf king bloodline when escaping the wind wolf town. But at this moment, heavenly fox demon bloodlines suddenly glowed, and under the light, the clash of the two bloodlines quieted down. Tang San didn't know that the Heavenly Fox bloodline could do such a thing. After the fusion, the Wind Wolf bloodline has fully reached level 6, and Tang San became a full-fledged level 6 martial artist. Thus, his next goal was to look for his sixth bloodline. The next day, Dubai came crashing down and hugged Tang San as he cried. Tang San then noticed that even Dubai had advanced to level 4. He said that even though he just watched the fight from far, his strong unwillingness of being useless to help gave him a splitting headache, and then he felt something in his body break. Then, he went unconscious, and when he woke up, he felt he had advanced to the fourth level. Tang San then told Dubai to wait in his room as he wanted to inform Director Guan about him. When the director heard it, he was happy that Dubai was able to finally break through. Dubai then asked Tang San if he could still continue to practice Purple Demon Eyes. Tang Sang nodded and said Purple Demon Eye could also be used in combat, as he demonstrated a mental oppression attack with his Purple Demon Eyes. Dubai was surprised to see Tang San's spiritual strength, which became even more powerful. Tang San said it was because of the Purple Demon Eyes, and added that it could also be linked to him being a level 6. When Dubai heard that Tang San broke through to the 6th level, he felt as though his breaking through to the 4th level didn't have any meaning. The next day when Madame Mu Yunyu called out Tang San for his decision that almost killed all the talents of the academy, Director Guan intervened, praising Tang San for his brave and adventurous spirit, which made Miss Yunyu dumbfounded. She was surprised since they all agreed to criticize Tang San previously in the meeting. Later, Director Guan told everyone about the process of encountering the level 9 winged tiger king and the victory against the peak level 7 winged tiger, which made the other students shocked. Then Director Guan announced that as the reward, the Academy wouldn't take anything from the hunt, and the loot from the 7th-ranked Tiger belonged solely to the five-man squad. The group was happy hearing it, but Miss Mu Yunyu dragged the Director away and bickered for a while. Then, Miss Mu Yunyu came back and asked Tan San to not level up to level 7 for the next five years, as his body wasn't mature enough to lay the foundation for the 7th rank, and if he forcefully broke through, his potential talent might get damaged. Tang San nodded, 
and said that he also felt pain when breaking through the sixth level, as his body almost could not take it. Thus, Mu Yunyu told Tang San to make his body stronger by even more arduous physical training and build the foundation for the seventh rank. Two days later, the good news came one after another, as Gu Li and Cheng Zi broke through to level five. Then, Wu Bingji sold the loot and divided the money, and each person received five elemental coins. Tang San, as the person who contributed the most, got eight elemental coins, 300 spirit horn coins, and 10,000 demon coins. Everyone was overjoyed by the gains, especially Dubai, who felt he gained money for doing nothing, and he again asked if they would go hunting again. Tang San told them that they would first get stronger after digesting the harvest and the meat of the beast, then consider the next hunt. So they all rushed to the store and bought many herbs to fasten their next breakthrough. Tang San chose dragon tendon fruit, which was very good for tempering the body, then chose a sapphire rattan which was a plant-type demonic beast, and some spinel gold. When in the room, Tang San absorbed the vine's bloodline and fused with it as his sixth bloodline. Then he controlled it, which reminded him of his past life and also of Xiao Wu. Thus, after the class, he rushed to the city without notifying the academy and went to the milk tea shop, but saw that Xiao Wu wasn't there. He sat there depressed, but looked back from time to time for Xiao Wu, but unfortunately, she wasn't there. Thus he went to the shop and asked for 14 milk tea after handing over 14 demon coins, which somewhat impressed Xiao Wu's mother. When Xiao Wu's mother was preparing the tea, Tang San asked about Xiao Wu and found out that she had gone to a school. Tang San thanked her for getting his answer and was surprised how Xiao Wu was able to go to the monster school despite being a human vessel.